I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Hey man, man, I'm gonna do it. What are you talking about? I'm gonna do it. I cannot keep them anymore. To what? I'm going to share all my secrets, man. All of them. What secrets? The secrets to achieve a sweet cup of coffee with V60. Man, are you crazy? No, man, I'm gonna do that. You cannot do that. I don't care. I'm, I don't care, man. I'm gonna do it. Don't. Well, try to stop me. Hi everyone, Matteo here. Today I want to talk about which is for me the best brewing method to achieve a sweet cup of coffee using the Hario V60. First of all, for those who don't know about this dripper, V60 is a conical coffee dripper. The name stems from the shape of the device. It's V-shaped with angles of 60 degrees and has a single hole where all the coffee drains. The internal walls also have ridges which help with airflow during the brewing. There are so many ways to brew with this dripper and I want to share with you mine and show you step by step this sweet method. What do you need to brew with a V60? First of all, a V60 dripper. I'm using a plastic 02, but you can use any material you own. You will also need a gooseneck kettle, a scale and a timer. If your scale doesn't have an integrated one, you can use a kitchen timer or even your phone. Lastly, you might need a coffee server if you don't want to drip directly in the cup. Let's start with the ratio of coffee to water. I use 60 grams per liter or 1 to 16.6666 forever because in my opinion this ratio gives me the best control over my brew. The grind size. For this method, grind your coffee medium coarse. I know it's very difficult to communicate grind size over a video, and also every grinder is different. I always use Comandante hand grinder as a reference, and for your info, I grind the coffee at 29 regular clicks. Water. To brew my coffee, I always use filtered water, and usually I set the brewing temperature around 94 degrees Celsius. If you're using a dark roast coffee, I would suggest brewing with a lower temperature, for example, 90 degrees Celsius. Now, if your kettle doesn't have any temperature settings, bring the water to a boil, then leave it aside to cool down for a couple of minutes. Get a conical paper filter and give it a very nice rinse without water to remove any potential paper taste. If you're using a ceramic V60, I would suggest to rinse the paper with at least 100 grams of hot water to warm up the dripper properly. With this method, I brew 15 grams of coffee with 250 grams of water. I divide the total amount of water by 5 pours of 50 grams each, poured every 30 seconds. Put the coffee in the dripper, give it up on the side to level the bed and let's start brewing. First pour, the pre-wetting, the blooming. I'm using 50 grams of water, more than three times the amount of coffee. Because I've noticed that this amount of water gives the possibility to the coffee to saturate faster and more uniformly. Uniform saturation equals even extraction equals more sweetness. As soon as you finish pouring water, Give it a swirl. And because the higher amount of water, you don't need to be brisk, but just a gentle swirl. This will make sure all the coffee is saturated and the reduced centrifugal force reduces the chances of filter clogging. Let the coffee bed rest for 30 seconds. If the coffee is very fresh, I usually wait for 45 seconds because fresher coffee contains more CO2 and a longer rest time 
gives a better chance of escaping to the gas, making the grounds more soluble. The second pour is another 50 grams of water. And this is the high extraction pour. At this point, the coffee is very soluble and easy to extract. It's good to give it a nice and proper agitation to push the extraction. The third pour is another 50 grams of water, and I like to call this the sweet pour. With most of the acidity extracted in the second pour, in the third pour we start to extract more sweetness and body. It's very important to pour slightly slower than during the second pour. Fourth pour, another 50 grams. And in my opinion, this is the most important pour. It's where you control the sweetness and the final result of the cup. In this pour, too much agitation could give you bitterness in the cup. And this is something that we don't want. But also, if you don't create enough agitation, you might reduce the extraction of the final sweetness. So it's important to pour a slower and steadier stream of water than during the third pour. Fifth and final pour, the remain 50 grams of water. I like to call this the balance pour. This last pour gives the lower extraction of solutes. It operates as a sort of bypass. The water here drops the TDS percentage, giving to the cup the right balance and opening up the sensory profile. It's important to pour very slowly, creating as minimum agitation as possible. Let all the water drain, give it a swirl or stir with a spoon, and finally, it's time to enjoy your sweet cup of coffee. What are the advantages of brewing with pulses and with this brewing method? Brewing with pulses increases agitation, and also the water has more speed of extraction because of the continued refresh of the coffee bed. Grinding your coffee coarser reduces the contact time between coffee and water, which results in a potentially reduced extraction of unpleasant astringent compounds like polyphenols. Also, your arm is less tired. As we know, every coffee, every grinder and every water are different from each other. So I want to give you some tips on how adjust variables of your brew. If your coffee tastes a bit bit, Mate, hey, what are you doing here? I'm here to stop you. How do you want to stop me? Thank you very much for watching, smash the like button and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Subscribe to this channel for the sequel and many more contents. Now I need to run to get my camera back. Ciao!